in the house of the Lord. Let me first start by saying, indeed, it is a privilege to be here yet another Sunday, yet another time in the presence of God. I want to thank you for all your prayers last week. When I went out to minister, it was well received. The household there were quite pleased. Um, feedback was, was positive, and I had some good support. I had some good support along with me <laughs> last week. Um, at Hall Village, I spoke on operating in the overflow during the changing seasons. And I really thought, even though I ministered there, that it would have been appropriate for us. It would have been appropriate for us. This morning, though, I just want to encourage us as a family, encourage us as a people, that there's grace for the broken. There's grace for the broken. And many times we would have heard that grace, well, don't let me say we. I would have heard that grace was offered when we sin. And I thought that that was the only time we really get God's grace on us. But amidst popular belief, I realized that you don't have to sin to be offered God's grace. There are times when we are broken, when we are despaired, when we are when we feel like we are forsaken that god offer us grace it might not be anything that you have done but because of the circumstances of life we need god's grace and many times we as a church and pastor will allude to it a lot we will say as a people we are too blessed to be stressed too anointed to be disappointed and then i pick up these other two too grateful to be hateful. I am the embodiment of empowerment. Sounds good. I am the embodiment of empowerment. How many of us feel empowered this morning? Even walking with God, how many of us feel that indeed we are the embodiment of empowerment? How many of us feel that we have achieved that where we are, that we are really empowered? How many of us? For sure, not me. <clears throat> Is any among us broken is any feeling helpless at points of times we feel very broken and we understand that grace is unmerited mercy the love and mercy given to us by god because god desires us to have it not necessarily because of anything we have done to earn it there's nothing that we have done or can do to earn God's grace. I want to say to you, church, that God's grace don't go on vacation. God don't ever leave us. He don't ever leave us. He says that his grace is sufficient for us. So even though you may feel broken in spirit, even though you may feel like God has forsaken you, I want to encourage us this morning that God will never leave us nor forsake us. His grace is sufficient his grace has called us it has redeemed us it has set us free it has strengthened us and it will happen again and again he will do it for us yet another time so this morning i only i really want to encourage us not to give up not to lose out on this great journey not to turn your back on god because you might be going through a broken situation. We all have suffered some sort of heartbreak. We all have suffered some sort of disappointment by a loved one, by a parent, by a child, by a boss. We have all suffered some form of disappointment. But I want to say to us, even though at times our heart is broken, it don't stop us from loving the person that have broken our heart. Because your child or your, or, your, or your spouse have disappointed you. You don't just turn your back. You try and you try and you try. God does the same for us. He loves us more than our loved one can love us. He loves us more than we can love our children. Yet still we disappoint him. But he offers us grace. He's offered us mercies. I want us to look. At Genesis chapter 16. And 
I'm going to look at Hagar just for a moment. Genesis 16. And I'll be reading from verse 7. I'll be using the Amplified Version for this one. And it reads us. But the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness on the road to Egypt by way of Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, where did you come from? And where are you going? And she said, I am running away from my mistress, Sarah. The angel of the Lord said to her, go back to your mistress and submit humbly to her authority. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will greatly multiply your descendants so that there will be many to come. The angel of the Lord continued, Behold, you are with child, and you will bear a son, and you shall name him Ishmael, God hears, because the Lord has heard and paid attention to your persecution or to your suffering. I'm going to skip verse 12 and go to verse 13. And it says, Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are God who sees. For she said, Have I not even here in the wilderness remain alive after seeing him? Who sees me with understanding and compassion? I'll stop there for the time. We serve a God who sees. There was nothing Hagar did to go through her suffering at that point of time. Nothing she did that deserved the suffering. But God understood. God heard her plight. And God who sees answered and visited her. Likewise with us, brethren, you would have midnight moments where the only person who sees your tears, where the only person who hears your groaning is God. I want to assure you this morning that that same God that visited Hakar then, he will visit you and he will fight for you. You are not in this battle alone. <laughs> you have a God who sees you, who hears you, who understands you, who loves you, and who have grace above all grace. Who have more grace than you can think about. Who have more grace to offer you than you might even want at this moment. God sees and he understands. He sees your tears and he's willing and ready to comfort you. There is grace for the broken. You might be wondering why is it that circumstances happen over and over in your life? Why is it it seems that you're in a wilderness moment over and over? But be assured that God will make a way. He will visit you. He will fight for you. He will bring you through the very same way that he did it for Hagar. And we would have thought that Hagar, she was not of the descendants of Israel, of God's most, you know, quote unquote, today's, today's word. She wasn't a Christian. She wasn't a Christian. But because she wasn't a Christian didn't mean that God didn't have compassion on her. It didn't mean that God didn't see and God didn't understand. So if we who are called by his name, if we who says that we love him, if we who says that we will go all out for him regardless of, would he not do the same for us? Would he not do the same for us? We might be wondering what is going to happen with this COVID-19. But God has seen you through from the beginning of the year. And the very same God who would have provided for you when country was locked down, now that country opened, don't you think he will provide for you? He will. I am not saying that as believers that nothing should come our way. They will come. Scripture reminded us that when the, the waters overcome, we will not be drowned. He didn't say eh, he said when. When persecutions come. He didn't say eh, which means that we will be pressed. Scripture says to us that we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. And this only 
happens because of God's grace for us. Only because of God's love towards us. Only because of his favor towards us. Not because of the family that we've born into. Not because of the friends we know. Not because of who we are. But it's because of God's mercies that we are not consumed. We can identify and we can say, great is his faithfulness. We can say morning by morning, new mercies we see. I want to say to us as a church, regardless of what the world is saying, regardless of how things may be looking, God will fight for you. He sees you. He hears your cry. He sees and he knows when you're going through a desperate situation where it seems as the old people say you're between a rock and a hard place. There is no way to turn. It seems that all around you you are about in. God is going to offer you that grace. I want to encourage us this morning. I want to say to us, even though you may feel crippled in your spirit, even though in your spirit you may feel at a disadvantage, use these moments to cry out to God. We are encouraged that weeping may endure for a night. But joy, it comes in the morning. I want to encourage somebody this morning that your joy is coming. Your joy is coming. You have wept too long. You have been struggling on this Christian walk too long. You have been two steps forward and four steps backward for too long. God has grace in store for you. God has more in store for you than you can even think, ask, or imagine. James reminds us that God gives us grace and he gives us more grace. So you cannot lose all, all of God's grace. You might be wondering, well, God, each time I find myself in this rut, you can't be going grace for me no more. He has more grace. He has more grace. But it does not mean because he has more grace for us that we are going to do foolishness. It doesn't mean that. The apostle asks us, should we continue in sin that grace may abound? No. But what I'm saying to us, that because God has grace for us, you do not have to walk around rejected. You do not have to walk around perplexed. You do not have to walk around like you don't know your God. You don't have to do that. Hold up your head, push back your shoulders. Understand who you are in Christ. Understand who you are in Christ and walk in your victory. Walk in your deliverance. Because God has grace for the broken. He has grace for us. I'm going to skip Hagar for a time. I don't want us to look at Mephibosheth. You don't have to turn to it. That's 2 Samuel 9, verse 7 to 11. And we know the story of Jonathan's son. How afterward came to the temple, to the, to, the, to the kingdom, sorry, that Jonathan and Saul had died. The men snatched him up, fled with him, and he fell and became crippled. Nothing to do with him. Not his fault. So I try to take us from the place of thinking that God's grace is only good enough for us when we sin. I want us to know the positions where it's not our fault. It is just a season. It is just how life is. It's just what life has thrown us. But in that time when, when, when he was in Lord Bar. The king David, he asks, is there no one that I can offer favor to? Why would David want to offer favor to Jonathan's son? Why would God want to offer us favor when 
very few so crippled, very few so let down, very few unwanted, very few like we are less than nothing. Why would God, in his infinite mercies, in his love, choose us to be vessels for him? Choose us to, to, to minister for him. Choose us to partner with him. Why would God choose us when we can say, oh, Sister Sherlock is better than me. Pastor Adin is better than me. Brother, we can compare ourselves to a whole set of people. But yet still, God has shown you his grace. Because there is something within you that God has deposited. There is something about you that is special and unique to God. Might not be special and unique to the person next to you. But it is to God. And I want to say to us, it is not your fault. It is nothing you have done to be broken. But God, he sees and he would answer. When Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth met David, he asked him, what is, your, what is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? And you know how people get highly offended by somebody called him a dog. But he even went worse than a dog. He said, dead one. There's nothing about him. Even as a dead dog David still thought that favor could have been offered to him. Did they say to him that he will eat at his table all the days of his life? There's a table that God has spread for us, for us to eat at all the days of our lives. There's a table that he said he put in the very midst of our enemies so we can afford to sit down and eat with comfort. Because we understand that there's a host of angels that encamps around us. There's a God that sits on his throne, that sees us, that hears us, and will answer. Amen. He will answer. Some of you would have lost a loved one during the past couple years. But God has still provided. When we look at our seniors that have lost their husbands, Look at them and see how God has favored them still. Look when they walk into the sanctuary. They walk with a grace. They walk with class. And not because of their children. Don't think it is because of the children. Orlando and Linda, they might provide for Sister Irma. But they can only provide a certain amount. God provide more grace for her. Sister Marsha, people, when you see her, people say, oh, Sister Marsha got the children that day, and that. But ask Sister Marsha, God has provided for her. There were nights that only she was crying, no one was there. There was nobody to turn to, and God was there. Sister Springer, in the house alone, yes, lady might be over there, angel might be coming to visit. But God continues to provide for her. Sister Taylor, we have roof and vet in them. But there are times that she's home alone. And the only body she can turn to is God and say, God have mercy. And God would have provided. We can go all the way back. We have Sister Monica. We have Sister Joan that God would have provided and have brought them through. We have Sister Pearl. So the Savior that God would have done it for them. Don't you think he would do it for us? Don't you think he is capable of doing it for us? That was a question. We have some that have loved ones. And there are periods of time that the loved one is not there. And God has provided. I'm just saying to us, I want to encourage us. Even though you may feel broken. Even though you may feel that you are less than a dog. Even though you may feel that. All hell have broken loose on you. That you are the target of the enemy. I want to encourage you. God will provide. He will come true. He has done it before. And he will do it again. There is nothing too hard for our God to do. There is nothing too difficult. Where you are now, 
God has already been here. He has already arrived at this spot even before we have gotten here. It may seem surprising to you. It may seem surprising to those around you, but not to God. He says that he's the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and he's the end, which means the center also belongs to him. Brethren, I want to say to you, continue to walk right before God. Continue to walk knowing that God will fight for you. Knowing he will provide for you. I don't only want to look at the Old Testament. But in Luke chapter 1, we come across a gentleman by the name of Zachariah, who was fearful. He was a priest in the house of God. He did all that he could. His problem was he had no children. And in Luke chapter 1, verse 12, let me go up to verse 11. All at once an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing just to the right of the altar of innocence. Zechariah was startled and overwhelmed with fear. But the angel reassured him, saying, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God is showing grace to you. God is showing grace to you. For I have come to tell you that your prayer for a child has been answered. Your prayers has been answered. God is showing favor to you. I am in need of God's favor. I don't know about nobody else. I am in need of God's favor. I am in need for God to show me his favor. I have an unsaved daughter. I have unsaved brothers. I have an unsaved sister. I have unsaved uncles, aunts. I need God to show me favor. I, I, I slept many times, so I need God to show me favor. I have unsaved neighbors. I have unsaved friends. I cannot be complacent. I cannot be contented knowing that God is showing me favor, yet still there are those around me that have not come into a relationship with God. I cannot think that I have a right. But even though God is showing us favor, we need to intercede on the behalf of those around us, those within our household that need to come to a relationship with Christ. I want to encourage us this morning, brethren, to understand God will show you favor. Your prayers are not going unanswered, even though in our mind it seems that God is taking ever so long. It seems that you were praying for your children forever and ever and then coming to know God. He hears, he sees, and he will visit. We continue to talk about the God of Abraham and the God of Jacob and the God of Israel and the God of Moses. What about your God? What about your God? Are you still, are you serving this same God that the men and the women of all were serving? They said that those were just like us. There's nothing strange to us today that the men and women of all did not go through. I want to encourage somebody today even though you may feel broken even though you may feel like you're not getting out of this burn you will get out do not give up do not give up the journey may seem long it may seem hard do not give up God has not brought you to this point to to leave you. He would have been faithful to you in days gone by. Trust me on this. He will be faithful to you now. He will continue to work it out for you. 
There's this songwriter, Laura Story, and she has a song named Grace. And, 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 the, and the course is, I ask you, how many times will you pick me up? When I keep on letting you down, and each time I will fall short of your glory, how far will forgiveness abound? And you answer, my child, I love you. And as long as you're seeking my face, you will walk in the power of my daily sufficient grace. As long as we continue to seek God's face, he will provide grace for us on a daily, a daily, a daily walk. I want to say to us this morning, if you are in need of God's grace, if you're feeling broken, if you're feeling like, I can't serve God because of my circumstances, I'm waiting till I get it right. Before I give my life to God, trust me, you will never get it right. You will never get it right. It is sitting, it's like sitting on the bed and saying, oh, I have to go to work. But I have to get up and go and have a shower. And you sit there from 5 o'clock in the morning, I have to go and get a shower to go to work. I have to go and get a shower. To 5 o'clock in the evening come, are you still saying you're going to get a shower to go to work? If you continue to sit where you are, hoping that someday you will live right and then give your life to God, you got it mixed up. You give your life to God and He will make it right. You don't make it right. You cannot make it right. We cannot fight a spiritual battle on emotions. We can't fight a spiritual battle with I will. We, we don't have the strength to fight it. Because the God book says the battle is not ours. God did not allow you to be here this morning just to hear the worship, how good we can sing. Just to hear how I can bring a word. Just to see the pastor. There's a purpose of being here this morning. God looked down in history. I recognize today was the day you ought to be here. Today is the day that you needed grace. Today was the day that you needed his mercies upon your life. We don't have tomorrow put down. And this is not only for unsaved. We as believers, we have been doing a whole set of nonsense. We have been up and down, seesawing with God. Some of us have been doing the very good things, the right things. Walking up right before God. But we are still broken. We are still broken. I want to invite us this morning. In the presence of God. To give it all to Jesus. To give him your broken places. To give him your tears. To give him your despair. I want to say to us. Give it all to Jesus. He understands and he is willing and he is ready to show us grace. To visit us where we are at. It doesn't make sense Sunday after Sunday. We come in and sitting at God's table. And hearing from him. And then going back out the very same way we come in. Jesus has come to heal the wounds of the brokenhearted, to set captives free, to proclaim the year of acceptance. He has come to comfort all who are in sorrow, to strengthen those crushed by despair. He's here to bring joy for our tears he's here to exchange our mourning for dancing he's here to set us free do not go through this week broken because you have not given it to jesus do not go through this week still not understanding how much god loves you and his grace for you i want to say to us this morning this grace 
for the broken. This healing for the hurt. There's anointing awaiting you. There's a place at God's table that is empty because you have not filled it. I want to say to you, there's an invitation for you to come and dine, for you to come and sup at God's table. Don't worry about what John is going to say, what Mary is going to say. Worry about what God is going to say. Worry about what he's saying. And he bid us come. He bid all of us come. So as we come, as we stand in God's presence, as we bow in God's presence, as your tears flow in God's presence, don't look around. Don't look around. Know that your deliverer has arrived. Somebody asked, how do you know he delivers? I know because he delivered me. Brethren, come.